Good evening and welcome to the seventh episode of Elliot Astro Imaging. I am your host and I am just pulling up here the guiding for tonight. I wanted to do a little image session for tonight as guiding is okay for tonight. It's not great, but it's okay. And I'm just going to be doing the Pelican Nebula again tonight, but this time it will be in color. Um, and it will be combined with the Hydrogen Alpha that I got last week. So I will be adding those together so that way I will do the masks and get a colored image and a Hydrogen Alpha image. So then you'll be able to see the colored stars with the Hydrogen Alpha, which is the red. So you'll be able to see the two of them together in one image. Um, I want to pull up for you the image that I have now currently, and here it is here. And this is just the colored image that you see here, so you can actually see the actual colored stars. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit here for everybody to take a look. Uh, that's the corner there, but going towards the middle, as I said, I do need a field flattener. But the middle is looking really good, and you can see the difference between a red star or a white star or anything like that, and you'll be able to get some detail. I'm taking these at a three-minute image as I'm not going for nebulosity, so I am not going huge distance for time capture. So all I really need is between three to five minutes. I'll be taking about 15 or 20 of these and then stacking these and using that as a base. So that way I can use these and then put the nebulosity on top of it so you can get a nice pristine image. So that is the agenda for tonight as I've already taken four of them so far to this point and I'll be adding between 10 and 15 more of these. So there's really not much more going on with that. I'm not really doing hydrogen alpha. I'm not doing any of the nebulosity or anything like that. Just solely just the stars so that way I can get a stacked image. I also was doing the image for the Orion G3, and I can pull that up too, okay? And this one's not too bad. I do have to fix the focus on this. I'm going to get a ring for it so that way the, the focus can stay in one spot as when I do move the mount, the focus does move so slightly with this and it is to try to get this absolutely 100 percent focused i did not do that as i'm not really focusing too much on this camera in general um i also do need to get a, a fringe killer as you can tell right here by the stars the colors are not completely lined up um it is an aprochromatic uh sigma lens but it's not totally aprochromatic uh what that means is for the non-astronomers out there is the, the telescopes that we use are called aprochromatic or achromatic. And achromatic means that the red, green, and blue, the light goes into the telescope and it has to meet to a certain point. If the red or the green is off by just a tiny bit, you're going to get that shift. Hence, that's why you see some of these stars that you can see the red and you can see that they're bloated. And that's what happens with these pictures is that they're off now the brighter stars as you can see is perfect you can't really see much but it's those medium stars that's where you're going to get some problems with so these stars are a little bit bloated because of one because the focus is not 100 percent accurate and two i do need a fringe killer for it so that way i need to get that taken care of with the fringe killer and that is just a simple filter that will correct that now an aprochromatic refractor that is the qhy on the zenith star 80 millimeter uh telescope that one is an aprochromatic 100 percent which means when i take an image it is a doublet meaning there's two glass in front of it and what that will do is it'll correct it and meaning that the stars are going to be pristine. Um, that's the difference between an eight or nine hundred hour refractor and hundred hour refractor. Is you're going to get that. Now it is correct. You can correct it. Um, I can correct this in post processing, and most people can. And like I can actually take these and actually align the red, green, and blue, and actually get this to be a, a beautiful image. 
Um, looking at the bottom here, you can actually see some nebulosity, and this is without a hydrogen alpha filter. As you can see, there's red right here, and that is actually where the head is of the pelican. So we're in the right area um, where you can actually see it from that other one, which is this one here. I'm going to zoom it out so everybody can take a look as we're going to get this bigger here and everybody can see. There we go. Um, you got the two stars, which are right here, and you got the two stars down there, and then the actual red is actually right down here. Now, of course, as I said before, there is no red with this is because the hydrogen alpha filter is off, and I'm using the Orion Sky Glow filter, and that's why it's going to show just the regular stars and their actual colors. And again, this is pre-processed. This is just the single image, and then I will take these into Sky Stacker Live right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show everybody real quick how to debayer an image, especially with a QHY camera. And I'm going to go over just a little bit about that so this way everybody can take a look and see what that means. So I want to do the entire screen here so everybody can take a look. And what I do to, to debayer an image is you go to Nebulosity 3. Um, it is a great program to use, especially for... Uh, the, the CCD cameras, and you have to square off the pixels, like I said a few episodes ago. And squaring that off is very, very, very simple. And what you do is you go to batch. You'd want to go to batch, and you go to uh, demosaic square raw color. What that will do is you will actually go to the image that images that you have currently, which are right here, which is the IC5070, and that's what I – I'm doing right now that is the pelican at three minutes and you're going to hit open um so what this will do is it, uh, it's going to pull up for manual d mosaic setup and it, there's a certain sensor of rgb or cmyg uh, rgb is red green and blue and that is what the qhy is there are some cameras out there like the orion g3 and that one is a cmyg that's cyan magenta yellow and green it's four colors so it's a little crazy, but that is exactly what you would use for that filter or for that sensor. Then you do pixel size, you're squaring off the pixels 1-1, one, one, and then matrix offset, so you're actually going to use 1. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I will add a few things on there for the people that are very interested in how the D-Mosaic works. But very simple, just hit done. And now what it's going to do is it's going to go through each image individually, and it's going to make these into color. So they're black and white right now, and it's just going through each image now. Should be done in just a second here. There we go. So now it's in color. So now what I plan on doing is we're going to make a new folder here, and we are going to just add it as IC5070. Okay, and then we're going to add the recons, the ones, and it's called reconstruction which is reconstructing the image itself, and we're going to put them in there. And then we can go to Deep Sky Stacker Live, and now we can actually add the images to the folder. So we'll go to Monitored Folder, and we'll go to IC5070. Hit OK. Monitor it. Yes. And we're going to stack the image itself. And then this one will actually be in color, so you'll actually see the image. And it's not black and white anymore because you reconstructed the image itself. So we are going to take this up here, so then that way you'll be able to see the image itself. There we go. And there you go. So now... You can actually see color in this image, which is really cool. And it is still stacking each image individually, which is really, really cool. And it's going to be a really smooth image with these, which is really awesome. So this is the colored image, as you can see. And it's going to go through each one here. And you can see at the top here, that's where the North American Nebula is. And then you can just barely see the Pelican Nebula right here. And again, this is just solely three-minute images without the hydrogen alpha filter, which is really awesome. And there it is right there. And you can see the faint subtle differences when it was going through. So now that's we're up to five stacked, six registered, 
And now we're, we're up to six. So we're at a total of six images, three minutes a piece. So about 18 images right now currently with this. So 18 minutes, not too bad. Um, where we stand right now, not bad. We are actually looking really, really good. So we are going to run, keep running these and keep going. And then I will stack the finalized image sometime tomorrow afternoon and see what the finalized image looks like. But not too bad. So so I wanted to make it just a short image session tonight, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, if anybody has any questions or has suggestions, uh, tomorrow night is supposed to be clear. So I want to be back out here tomorrow night. I will be putting the hydrogen alpha filter back on. And I'm going to be getting as much exposure of the Seder complex. Uh, Seder is the star that sits next to Deneb. Um, I can pull up um, the Starry Night software and I can show everybody where we are pointing right now. Right now, as I said, that is the star Deneb. And we are right below it. And North American Nebula sits right here. And Pelican sits right here. And what I will do is I will hit the all sky so everybody can see where it is. So here it is right here. This is North American Nebula. And then the Pelican sits right here. And that's where I'm shooting right here. So where Seder is, where the Seder, you just follow Cygnus all the way down. And of course, this is an imaginary line in the constellation. You'll see that Seder sits right here. The image session is done with that. So we're going to click start, and we're going to do that one again. So Seder sits right there, and then Seder complex is all right here. So if I were to hit all sky image, you will see there is a bunch of red hydrogen alpha nebulosity all right in this area. And that's where I want to shoot. That's where I want to get. And eventually, at the end of this summer, as I said, I want to get a huge mosaic panel of all of this right here. And will be called North American Nebula all the way to the crescent, which is right in here. So I will get all of that, and then I'll take you know five to six hours in hydrogen alpha, and then I will take roughly three to four hours of just regular Orion Sky Glow, and then stitch each image together to create the mosaic. And I'll have all summer to do this. This is probably going to take between twenty to thirty sessions. And eventually, I will get a beautiful image. So I'm going to end the broadcast now. Um, if anybody has any questions, I will be out here till about midnight or so tonight. And then I will be back out here tomorrow. I uh, should be out here at about quarter to 10, 10 o'clock, as it is getting darker later. Uh, we are almost at that point where we're at the longest daylight of the year. Uh, June 21st is when the days are going to start getting shorter for daylight and the nights are going to start getting longer again. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the videos uh, for the Elliott Astro Imaging on YouTube as I now have re-edited every single video and this one also. And going through each one, I have put intros and I have put an outro uh, to make it a little bit more professional. I will let everyone go. Have a good night.